Hello, everybody. Welcome to Israel's Church of Living God. I'm Brother Rodney and Brother Gerald will be reading today. We'll be doing a lesson today entitled... Turn it up. We'll be doing a lesson today entitled uh, The Two Trees in the Garden. The Two Trees in the Garden. Hit the master. The Two Trees in the Garden. Right there, that's good. So that will be the t today's title, The Two Trees in the Garden. The Two Trees in the Garden. And so, you know, I was uh, doing a little research on this, and I found out that uh, most of your cultures have a tree of life. Most of your cultures have a tree of life, and they all explain it differently. Like, for instance, in uh, Judaism, which we don't practice, they have a... Uh, what they call the Kabbalah, and they deal with the tree of life, and there's different points, like ten different points that they deal with when it comes to the tree of life. So, um, and then in Asia, in the Asian religion, they also have a tree of life. So most of your cultures have what you call a tree of life. So we're going to deal with the tree of life today, the tree of life, which is in the Bible. And we're going to deal with the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And we're going to show you that these are not actual trees. These are actual beings that we are going to be dealing with today. So we're going to start off in Genesis, the second chapter. Genesis 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Genesis 2 and 8. Genesis 2 and 8. When you get it, Brother Gerald, go ahead and read it. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Uh huh. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. Uh huh. And good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. Now we're going to show you that this is not an actual tree like most. Uh, cultures uh, betray this as being an actual tree. So he said the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden. Go ahead. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So we got two trees right here. These are the two trees that we're going to deal with. The tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And we're going to show you who these trees are actually are. Let's look at them again. Let's go to Revelations, the second chapter. Revelations 2. Let's look at them again. Revelations 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 7. We're going to read one verse. Verse 7. Revelations 2 and 7. Sorry. We got a problem up here. Uh, what this is going to be able to hang for the rest of the class. Oh my God. Revelations 2 and 7. Go ahead and read it. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Uh -huh. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, uh -huh. which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now, so he said, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So this tree right here, we're looking at right here, is also, was also, is also mentioned as being in the midst of the garden. Just like we saw in Genesis. Now, let's look at this other tree again. Because this tree right here is the tree of life. So now we're going to look at this other tree again, which is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66. And we're going to pick it up at verse 17. Isaiah 66. In verse 17, when you get it, go ahead and read it. They that sanctify themselves uh -huh. and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, uh -huh. eating swine's flesh, uh -huh. and the abomination, and the mouse, shall he be consumed together, saith the Lord. Now he said, they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, Eating swine's flesh. Now, wait a minute. Now, so when you look at Adam and Eve during the time that they were in the garden, there was no such thing as uh, um, uh, men eating flesh. Mm. 
So now we're looking at another time right here. The Lord is likening this tree right here. He said, he said, uh, they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh. And them. so this tree right here is representing something evil. Because he said the swine's flesh is an abomination, and those that eat it is they're gonna be consumed together. So this tree right here is an evil tree. Does everybody understand? So we got the tree of life, and we got the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And we're gonna show you these trees represent did uh, uh, um, uh, um, beings, not actual, these are not actual trees. We, let's go now, let's go to uh, Genesis, let's go back to Genesis, the second chapter, Genesis 2. Genesis 2, and we're going to pick it up in verse 15. Genesis 2 and 15. And now we're going to see what happened when they were in the garden. Genesis 2 and 15. When you get it, go ahead and read it. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Uh-huh. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Uh-huh. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. Now, the tree of knowledge, and he didn't say nothing about the tree of life. He just told you the tree, because all other trees you can eat of. So that would include the tree of life. But this tree of knowledge and good and evil, the Lord said, don't eat of this tree. Go ahead and read. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, uh -huh. thou shalt surely die. He said, when you eat of this tree, that's when you're going to die. In that day, you're going to die. Did Adam die that day? Did Adam and Eve die that day? No. Because Adam lived 930 years after that. So he didn't die that day. But notice something though. Adam did not live to be a thousand years old. Neither did Methuselah. No one lived to be a thousand years old. And that should give us a clue right there as to what day we are talking. What kind of day we are talking about. We're not talking about a literal day. We're talking about a day like a thousand years. So in that day, when Adam and Eve ate of that fruit, or the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they ate, I mean, they died that day. Does everybody understand? Amen. They did not live to be a thousand years old because a, a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. Go ahead and read. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. Uh -huh. I will make him in help. Meet for him. And skip I'll down the verse. Skip down to verse twenty-one, because we're gonna we're gonna keep we're gonna hit it and we're gonna move. Skip down to verse twenty-one. Go ahead and read it. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. Uh huh. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Uh huh. And the rib which the Lord God hath taken from man, made he a woman. And brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she have, she was taken out of man. Go ahead. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Uh huh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife. And were not ashamed. Now, so they didn't even understand that they were naked. Mm. It's just like a child. Mm. You understand? You know, at some point they start getting older, they feel they realize that they're naked. Mm -hmm. But but they didn't understand that they were naked until after they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They didn't realize that they were naked. So we're gonna see. What happened with Adam, I mean with Eve, and with this serpent? We're going to see what happened. Because most people think that she was talking to a literal serpent, and then she ate of this apple and everything off of this tree. This fruit off of this tree. First of all, the Bible doesn't say what type of fruit it was that she ate off of. Men just made that up. Some people say apricots. Some people say apples. You name it. 
Well, one thing about it is the book doesn't say whether it's an apple or apricot, but it does tell you what type of fruit it was, it, uh, uh, relatively speaking. It tells you what type of fruit that she ate of, and we're going to get into that because it was not literal fruit that you take off of a tree. We had Genesis 3. Genesis 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Genesis 3 and 1. Go ahead and read it. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, uh -huh. which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now, so Eve is not actually talking to a serpent. She is talking to a spiritual being right here. And we're going to show you who this spiritual being is. So now he said the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So now he is tempted. They got an ongoing conversation. They don't have an ongoing conversation right here. And look at what happened. Go ahead and read. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Uh-huh. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, uh -huh. God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, uh -huh. neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So, now, so you, you can't eat of this fruit that's in the midst of the garden, neither can you touch it. You can't eat of this tree and eat the fruit of that tree, lest you're going to die. Go ahead and read verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. Now he just lied to us. God said you're going to die. Satan said you're not going to die. This tree right here, this serpent rather, said you're not going to die. What's this serpent, Satan? We're going to show you. This thing, she's not talking to no literal serpent. And neither did she go to a literal tree and eat from a tree. She is actually eating from the tree that God told her not to eat from already. If you got some understanding. Read that verse again. Verse 4. Uh-huh. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Uh-huh. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Uh -huh. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So it's a matter of understanding to understand good and evil. But they didn't understand good and evil until she started uh, talking to Satan. Go ahead and read. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, uh -huh. and that it was pleasant to the eyes, uh -huh. and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Go ahead. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now, so did she take some actual fruit to her husband and he started eating it and, you know, and then he became as she was and, and everything. They understood good and evil and all of this. We got to find this out because, you know, people have been going around for centuries telling men that this tree that, was, that they partook from was actual fruit. And it was an actual tree. Go ahead and read. What verse you at? Verse 7. Uh-huh. And the eyes of them both were open. Uh-huh. And they knew that they were naked. Go ahead. And they sewed fig leaves together uh -huh. and made themselves aprons. Now, how do they understand how to do that? How do they understand how to sew? Mm -hmm. Why do they understand this? Let's go now. Let's go. It's just, you know, I look at this like, a, like, a, like I say earlier, like a child. You know, Adam and Eve were just like children. You know, a, a child walk around butt naked, don't even know they butt naked. Until they get a certain age, then they know they naked. And they start, and then when they get a certain age, they know what's good and what's evil. But at this juncture right here, at this right here, they knew once they ate from this tree of knowledge of good and evil that they were naked and they knew what good was and they knew what evil was. Just, but the only thing we see them doing, she, we see, see really doing is talking to Satan. Her really doing is talking to Satan. Let's go to Revelation, the 20th chapter. Let's show you this serpent real quick. 
Revelations 20. Because, <coughs> excuse me, this is not an actual serpent. <coughs> Revelations 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Let's show you who this serpent is that Eve was talking to. Revelations 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Revelations 20 and 1. Go ahead and read it. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of a bottomless pit and uh -huh. a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, uh -huh. that old serpent. Stop right there. He said that old serpent. That old serpent. This is that serpent that was in the garden with Adam and Eve and the tree of life. He said that old serpent, uh-huh. Which is the devil. Which is the devil, uh-huh. And Satan. Uh-huh. And bound him a thousand years. Go ahead. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up. And set a seal upon him. Uh-huh. That he should deceive the nations no more. So the thousand years should be fulfilled. Now, so you see what Satan was doing since he's been out of this pit? From the start, he deceived Eve from the start, and now he's still deceiving men. And the Lord is going to shut him up one day and set a seal upon him. He said, cast him into the bottom of his pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. Now, if somebody's being deceived, then they have been given, given some rotten fruit. If they are being deceived, they, have, they are being given some bad fruit. Go ahead and read. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Uh, and after that, he must be loosed a little season. So this, uh, uh, Satan has been get, passing out this tainted fruit since the garden. And he is still passing out this tainted fruit. Fruit. Let's go now. Let's go to um, let's go to Ezekiel the 28th chapter. Ezekiel the 28th chapter. Ezekiel 28, and we're gonna pick it up at verse 12. I don't know why people wait till we get here, then they want to start talking, start playing instruments and all this stuff when we get here. Ezekiel 28, Ezekiel 28. And we're going to pick it up in verse 12. <sighs> Ezekiel 28 and 12. Go ahead and read. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. Uh -huh. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sun, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Uh huh. Thou has been in, thou has been in Eden, the garden of God. Thou has been in Eden, the garden of God. We we, we read this last week. We're just going over it again because I want to show you something. <coughs> Go ahead and read. Thou has been in Eden, the garden of God. Uh huh. Every precious stone was by thy covering. Uh huh. The sardius, topaz. Uh huh. And the diamond, the burial, the ox. And the jasper, the sapphire, uh -huh. the emerald, and the charbuckle. And the carbuckle, go ahead. And gold, uh -huh. the worksmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes were prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Now, we're looking at a created being right here, which is Satan, covered in all of these precious stones. And he's going to tell you in verse 14. Go ahead and read it. Thou art the anointed cherub. That covereth. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. This is a cherub angel. We're going to look at these cherub angels in a minute, right? He said, look, thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Uh-huh. And I have said thee so. Uh-huh. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Uh-huh. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. Uh huh. Till iniquity was found in thee. Till iniquity was found in him, and we all know he was cast out. When iniquity was found, he was cast out. So he said, Look, 
Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. And we know right here we are dealing with Satan. None other than Satan. He was covered in all these precious stones. Remember when, she, remember when the book said uh, this tree was one to be desired and, to, and was, was good to look upon and one to be desired. So she saw all these precious stones on this serpent or this tree and she started eating from it. Let's go now. Let's go to Isaiah the 57th chapter. Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57, and we're going to pick it up at verse uh, 19. Isaiah 57 and 19. Let's pay attention to what we're reading, because we are not reading about no actual serpent, and neither are we reading about no actual tree. Because we're going to show you, if, if, that, if that was the case, this tree of life, if the Lord had it in the garden and that tree was going to give you life, and then he had the tree, I mean, had the, uh, the, the cherub angels who keep the way of the tree of life, then who could get life there? That tree was still, this tree is still in the garden. Who could get life? Think about that for a minute. Isaiah 57 and 19. Isaiah, you might want well to close the book and just say, forget about God. Because the tree of life was still being, is still in the garden then. Isaiah 57 and 19. 57 and 19. Go ahead and read it. I create the fruit of the lips. I create the fruit of the lips. I create it. Go ahead and read. Peace. Peace to him that is far off. Uh-huh. And to him that is near. Go ahead. Save the Lord. And I will heal him. So he said, I create the fruit of the lips. And that's what comes out of the lips. It is fruit. Whether it is good fruit or whether it is bad fruit. Does everybody understand? Amen. Because this tree of knowledge of good and evil, he's give he giving out fruit too. Some of it's good, some of it's bad. But the tree of life, that's all he gives is good fruit. And I'm going to show you. Let's go now. Let's go to uh, let's go to uh, uh, Hosea the tip chapter. Let's see what kind of fruit this tree of knowledge of good and evil. Let's see what kind of fruit he gave to Eve. Hosea ten, and we're gonna pick it up at verse twelve. Hosea ten and twelve. Let's see what kind of fruit that Eve ate when she ate from the tree of knowledge. Of good and evil. Hosea 10 and 12. Go ahead and read it. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Uh huh. Reap in mercy. Break up your fellow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Uh huh. You see what the Lord is coming to rain upon you? Righteousness. Just like that tree of life. But go ahead and read. Ye have plowed wickedness. Ye have plowed wickedness, uh-huh. Ye have reaped iniquity. Uh-huh. Ye have eaten the fruit of lies. You have eaten the fruit of lies. And this is what Eve ate when she ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. She ate the fruit of lies. Because if that tree was so good for, for them, then why would the Lord tell them, look, you can eat of all the other trees. But the tree of knowledge of good and evil, don't eat from that tree. And this is what she got from that tree that she was eating from. The, uh, uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. She ate the fruit of lies. Not no apple or no orange or no apricot. That's not going to make you wise one way or the other. It's not going to make you uh, uh, dumb, neither will it make you wise. Because if that was the case, I eat apples every day. And you know, I'm not the wisest person. And I know this. And I do eat apples at least five times a, a week. But I don't see myself getting no smarter from eating them. Now, let's go now. He said, you have plowed wickedness and you have eaten the fruit of, of the reap, the, you have reaped iniquity, you have eaten the fruit of lies. Finish that. 
Because, because thou didst trust in thy way. Uh huh. The multitude of thy mighty men. Now, let's go now. Let's go to uh let's go to Genesis the third chapter. Genesis the third chapter. Genesis, Genesis 3, and we're gonna pick it up in verse 7. Try to get y'all out of here quick today. Genesis 3 and uh, 7. Genesis 3 and 7. Go ahead and read it. And the eyes of them both were open. Uh -huh. And they knew that they were naked. Uh -huh. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Go ahead. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Now this is the Lord now because he was on the earth at this time. Because voices, excuse me, don't walk. So the Lord is walking through the garden right here. Go ahead and read. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God uh, uh -huh. amongst the trees of the garden. Go ahead. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Uh -huh. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, uh -huh. and I hid myself. Now, he said, I was, I was afraid of you, Lord, and I hid myself. Now, the Lord going to ask him a question right here. Go ahead and read. And he said, uh -huh. who told thee that thou was naked? Stop right there. Who told you that you were naked? And the only one that she was talking to in the garden, he was talking to was who? Satan. Satan. And then she went and told Satan, I mean went and told Adam what Satan had told her. So what did she do then? She ate from that tree of knowledge of good and evil. And who is that tree of knowledge of good and evil? Satan. Because the Lord said, because it's a matter of you, somebody telling you something or you reading something in order for you to get some type of wisdom or this type of fruit that we dealing with. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? And so the only one that she was talking to in the garden was Satan. So Satan had to tell her that she was naked. Go ahead and read that verse again. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Uh huh. Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? See? So he said, Have you eaten of this tree that I told you not to eat from? And she was standing there eating from that tree all the time. And that tree was none other than Satan, not no literal tree. Uh, with branches growing out of it and fruit coming off of it and everything. Because those type trees, you don't get wisdom from. You get wisdom from either reading or somebody telling you something. Go ahead and read. Because how did Adam get it? Eve told him. Go ahead and read verse 12. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, uh -huh. she gave me of the tree. Uh -huh. And I did. Eve. See, he going to hide behind a woman. <laughs> First thing he does is try to hide behind a woman. But if Adam hadn't listened to his wife, then we probably wouldn't be in the predicament that we are now. Maybe, I don't know how God would have done it. Maybe he would have put Eve to sleep and gave Adam another wife. I don't know. But had Adam, because they were supposed to live forever. And that's what we have to get back to. That's what God wants his man to get back to. Living forever. Adam took that from us. Adam, because he was, you know, Adam was the head, so he listened to his wife, so he ultimately, he is the one who really took it from her. She was deceived, but then she took it back to Adam, and once she took it back to Adam, that was it. Now, we have to take this uh, debt, or uh, be, uh, 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 this first debt has been put on us, where we have to take the dirt nap. <laughs> And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And remember what the Lord said, who told you that you were naked? So somebody told Eve that she was naked, and then she went back and told Adam, have you eaten of that tree that I told you not to eat from? Go ahead and read. Trees don't talk. Trees do not talk. They do not bear fruit that's going to make you wise or make you dumb. Go ahead and read. Verse 13. Uh-huh. And the Lord God said unto the woman, 
What is this that thou hast done? Uh huh. And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, uh -huh. and I did eat. You see that? She telling you what tree she ate from right here. She said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. He beguiled me. She didn't go to no tree and take off no fruit, but go ahead and read. The serpent did beguile me. She didn't say, well, I went to the tree and I picked off an apple like you told me not to. She didn't say nothing like that. The serpent is the one that beguiled me, and I did eat. Go ahead and read. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, uh -huh. thou art cursed above all cattle. Uh -huh. And above every beast of the field, Upon thy belly shalt thou go. Go ahead. And thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Skip down to verse 17. Go ahead. So now he's punishing everybody. He, punish, he ain't punishing no tree. <laughs> he punishing Satan. Skip down to verse 17. We ain't going to even walk, uh, deal with the woman. But go ahead and read. I tell you what. Keep on reading. Read on, read on through it. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, uh -huh. and between thy seed and her seed. Go ahead. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Uh -huh. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Go ahead. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. See, so God made the man the head right here. You know, so this is why women, when they had their babies, uh, they uh, travailed in pain because of what Eve did. She went and talked. It was a woman that was in deception, not the man. So initially, it was a woman that was in deception, not the man. He said to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrows in thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Now, I know a lot of women don't like to hear that, but this is the way that God set it up, that the man was supposed to rule over the woman. And actually, this is the law. I'm going to get stoned, so let me move on. Verse 17. Go ahead. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, uh -huh. and hast eaten of the tree. See? You have hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and have eaten of the tree. So now where did Eve get her uh, uh, fruit from? Satan. Satan. Who told thee that thou was naked? Satan had to tell her that she was naked. And he said unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree. Go ahead and read. Of which I command thee, uh -huh. saying, thou shalt not eat of it. Uh -huh. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Skip down to verse 22. Skip down to verse 22. Go ahead. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is, is become as one of us. Stop right there. He said, The man is become as one of us. How did he become one of them? Go ahead and read. To know good and evil. To know good and evil. And somebody taught Adam and Eve, which was Satan, good and evil. So now this man understands what's good and evil. It's like I said earlier, it's just like a child. Once they start getting a little old, they can walk around butt naked. They start getting a little older, get a little older, they find out, well, I'm naked. Let me put on some clothes. <laughs> then, once they start getting a little bit older, a little bit older, they understand what's wrong and what's right. And so by them eating of this fruit right here from Satan, they understood what is wrong and what is right, what is good and what is evil. What verse you at? Verse 22. Go ahead. And the Lord God said, then the Lord God said, Behold, uh -huh. the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. I was holding it right there. He said us. Who is this us? <laughs> Who is this us right here? Us means more than one. And he's not talking to angels. Because we're going to show you how these angels look. He said, look, they, they should become as one of us. Who is this us? 
That is the other Godhead member that is known today as the Father. Go ahead and read. And now, lest he put forth his hand uh -huh. and take also of the tree of life. Stop right there. Lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life. What tree of life? We're going to show you what is this tree of life that can give you eternal life. Because they already had life when they were in the garden. So we're not talking about give you life like uh, you breathing. No, we're not talking. We're talking about give you eternal life because they already had life. He said, let's, pour, let's, let's we put forth our hand and take hold of also, lest they put forth their hand and take also the tree of life. Go ahead. And eat uh -huh. and live forever. So it's a matter of it was a matter of knowledge. It was a matter of this fruit of wisdom for you to live forever. So if they had continued, if they had went to the tree of life and ate from that tree, they would have lived forever. But they chose to go to the, the to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which was Satan, and then. They, that's how the, the creation uh, got killed. And that's why we have to take this dirt nap now. Because they went and talked to Satan, or she went and talked to Satan, and took it back to her husband. Go ahead and read. Therefore the Lord God set him forth from the Garden of Eden. Uh-huh. To, to till the ground from whence he was taken. Uh-huh. So he drove out the man... And he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden uh -huh. cherubim. Cherubims, go ahead. And a flaming sword which turned every man to keep the way oh. of the tree of life. So now he said, look. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the uh, uh, east of Eden cherubims. And a flaming sword which turned on every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Now, wait a minute. So now, if the tree of life is in the garden, and you got these cherubims uh, um, keeping people out or keeping uh, keeping creatures out, then how are you going to get life? You know, everybody understand what I'm saying? We should be trying to find this garden right here instead of talking about God. Amen. We should be trying to find this tree of life because it's the only way you're going to get it right here. But that's why I'm said, telling you that this is not a literal tree right here we're looking at. And I'm going to show you, this is not a literal tree. Mm. But look at what he did right here. He put these cherubims right here to keep the way of the tree of life. He ain't protecting them, he's just keeping the way of the tree of life. Let's go to Ezekiel the 10th chapter. Let's look at this again. Ezekiel keeping the way of the tree of life. But look at what the tree of life is called, though. But look at these cherubims right here, who they are uh, keeping the way of. We had Ezekiel 10, Ezekiel 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Ezekiel 10 and 1. Look at who these cherubims are keeping the way of. Go ahead and read. Ezekiel 10 and 1. Go ahead. Then I looked, and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubim, uh -huh. there appeared over them as it were a separate stone. Go ahead. As the appearance of the likeness of a throne. Now here we got a throne over these cherub angels right here. He said, then I look and behold in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims. Now this is what we can read look as above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them as it were a sapphire stone as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. Now, who sits on the throne? In heaven. The Lord, right? But he's sitting over these cherubims, though. Verse 2, go ahead. And he spake unto the man clothed with linen and uh -huh. said, Go in between the wheels. Even under their cherub. Uh huh. And fill and fill thine hand with coils of fire from between the cherubim. Uh huh. And scattered them over the city, and he went in my sight. Go ahead. Now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house, 
when the man went in and the cloud filled the inner court. Now he said the cherubim stood on the right side of the house when the man went in and the cloud filled the in inner court. Now look at this. Verse 4, what does it say? Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherubim. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherubim. That goes the Lord and that goes those cherub angels. Because these cherub angels followed the Lord where he, wherever he went. Just like they are, they were keeping the way of the tree of life when he was in the garden. And I said he, because that's who the tree of life was, or was in the garden. It was the Lord. Amen. Go ahead and read. And stood over the threshold of the house. Uh-huh. And the house was filled with the clouds. Go ahead. And the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. See, the glory of the Lord was there in his house, and the cherub angels right there with him. Mm. Go ahead and read. And the sound of the cherubim's wings were heard even to the outer court. Uh-huh. As the voice of the mighty God when he speaketh. Go ahead. And it came to pass that when he had commanded the man clothed with linen, saying, Take fire from between the wheels, from between the cherubim. Uh -huh. Then he went in and stood beside the wheel. Verse 7, go ahead. And one cherub stretched forth his hand from between the cherubim uh -huh. until the fire that was between the cherubim. Now look, one cherub stretched forth his hand from between the cherubims until the fire that was between the cherubims. Go ahead and read. And took thereof and put it into the hands of him that was clothed with linen. Uh-huh. Who took it and went out. Now, skip down to verse 14. Look at what happened now. Verse 14. Go ahead and read. And everyone had four faces. Now, this is how the cherub angel looked now. Every one of them had four faces. Uh-huh. The first face was the face of the cherub. And the second face was the face of a man. Uh huh. And the third face was of a lion. Uh huh. And the fourth face of an eagle. Go ahead. Now you see something like this, boy, you probably faint. <laughs> Go ahead and read. And the cherubims were lifted up. This is the living creature that I saw by the river of the Sheba. Uh huh. Keep reading. And he said, now, he said, now, the, 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 uh, the uh, cherubim was lifted up now. Go ahead and read. And when the cherubims went, the wheels went by them. Uh huh. And when the cherubims lifted up their wings to mount up from the earth, uh -huh. the same wheels also turned out from beside him. Keep reading. And when they stood, these these stood. And when they were lifted up, these lifted up themselves also. Uh huh. For the spirit of the living creature was in them. Now look at what else is going to say right here. So now they get ready to take off. They mount up, get ready to take off. Go ahead and read. Then the glory of the Lord departed from off the threshold of the house. Uh oh, wait a minute. He said, he said, look, then the glory of the Lord departed from off the threshold of the house and stood over the cherubim. There go those cherubims with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Just like they were uh, 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 watching the way of the tree of life when he was in the garden. He had those cherub angels standing there with those flaming swords. Nobody getting in here. Now, here we got the Lord right here. And they are doing what? Keeping the way of the tree of life or keeping the way of the Lord. Because that's who the tree of life was in the garden. It was the Lord. Otherwise, you might well just be looking. We should be put this book down, stop saying God, and start looking for that tree of life in the garden. We need to be trying to find that garden where the tree of life is. Finish that. What verse you at? Verse 19. Uh-huh. And the cherubim lifted up their wings uh -huh. and mounted up from the earth in my sight. Uh, so who was going first, though? The Lord was going above them, right? Then they come up under the Lord, mm. keeping the way of the Lord or keeping the way of the tree of life. And the cherubim lifted up their wings and mounted up from the earth in my sight. Uh-huh. When they went out, 
the wheels also were beside them, uh -huh. and everyone stood at the door of the east gate uh -huh. of the Lord's house. Of the Lord's house. Go ahead. And the glory of the God of Israel was over them above. He was over them above. They still keeping the way of the tree of life or keeping the way of the Lord. These cherub angels. So we know now. This tree, but we're going to show you that who exactly who this tree of life is. Let's go now. Let's go to uh, because you know some people try to say that the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil they are one and the same. Uh uh, Lord kick Satan out. Kick the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He kicked them out, and the tree of life was left there. It didn't say nothing about keeping the way of the knowledge of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It just said keep the way of the tree of life. Those cherub angels. Amen. Everybody understand? Because the tree of life was still there. Then why did the book say he uh, we, he put uh, uh, a cherub angels there with flaming swords to keep the way of the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil? He just said the tree of life. Let's go now. Let's go to uh, let's go to uh, uh, Psalm the 99th chapter, Psalm 99. And you know, even tells you here right here in Psalm the 99th chapter when they built the uh, built the Ark of the Covenant and they had the mercy seat and they had the two cherub angels facing the mercy seat. Let's see who was sitting on the mercy seat. These cherub angels still keeping the way when he was sitting on the mercy seat. We had uh, Psalm 99, Psalm 99, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Psalm 99 and 1. Go ahead and read it. The Lord reigneth, uh -huh. let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims. He sitteth between the cherubims. Because the cherubims are keeping the way of the tree of life or keeping the way of the Lord. Read that one more time. The Lord reigneth. Let the people tremble. Uh huh. He sitteth between the cherubims. Go ahead. Let the earth be moved. He sitteth between the cherubims. Go ahead and read verse 2. The Lord is great in Zion. Uh huh. And he is high above all the people. Now, so he's sitting, he's, he, 